Level zero. It begins with nothing, no countdown, no storm, just silence. Then a streak. A faint burn cuts across the night sky, here and gone, before your breath returns. No one predicted it. No headline announced it. No telescope charted its path. This is a sporadic meteor, a lone traveler, unbound by calendar or comet. It isn't part of any recognized meteor shower, just a piece of rock or dust, maybe no larger than a grain of rice, that wandered into our atmosphere at tens of kilometers per second and surrendered in light. These meteors come from everywhere and nowhere, stray fragments from long-dead comets, ancient debris nudged by Jupiter's pull, leftovers of collisions in the asteroid belt, and they're constant. Every hour of every night, up to 10 sporadic meteors skim across the sky. No season, no source, just the universe, shedding its skin in whispers. If you've ever looked up on a clear night and seen a meteor outside any forecasted shower, that was sporadic. The universe reminding you, it's always in motion. Even without a celestial event, the cosmos never truly sleeps. You just have to be looking. Level 1 Now the quiet ends. It's August, the air is warm, the moon sets early, and suddenly, the sky is alive. Lines of light dart across the heavens, some faint, some brilliant, some flaring into fireballs. It's not a trickle, it's a rain. These are the Perseids. Earth is moving through the debris stream of Comet Swift Tuttle, a cosmic trail that loops around the sun every 133 years. Each summer, our planet plows through it like a windshield through a swarm, and the dust becomes flame. The Perseids are fast, around 59 kilometers per second, and bright. Some leave glowing trains that linger for seconds. Others flash green, blue, even violet. They appear to radiate from the constellation Perseus but they strike across the sky like nature's fireworks. The best part? They're consistent. During peak nights in mid-August, you might see up to 100 meteors per hour in dark skies. They've been observed for over 2,000 years. Ancient Chinese and Roman records speak of them. The Perseids remind us that some cosmic events are so predictable. They've been circling back since before the written word. Level 2 Cold Air frozen breath, and then fire. The Geminides don't streak, they blaze, their light cuts deeper, their trails linger longer, and their origin, stranger than most. Unlike almost every other major meteor shower, the Geminides aren't comet-born. Their parent is an asteroid, 3200 Phaethon, a rock that behaves like something in between a comet and a stone. It doesn't sprout a classic tail, but it leaves a trail of debris anyway, enough to spark the most dramatic shower of the year. The Geminides hit our atmosphere slower than the Perseids, around 35 kilometers per second, but they burn with incredible brightness. Their particles are denser, chunkier. They don't just flash, they explode. Some paint the sky green or gold. Others break into multiple fragments mid-flight. They appear to radiate from the constellation Gemini, hence the name. Mid-December, peak rates can reach 120 meteors per hour. The 2020 Gemini display was one of the strongest in recent history, a light show of burning stones from a ghost comet. Sometimes the most beautiful fire doesn't come from a comet. It comes from a stone that remembers how to burn. Level 3 This one doesn't wait. It arrives in the dark chill of January, fast and furious, then disappears almost as suddenly as it came, a meteor shower with one of the shortest peak windows in the sky. These are the Quadrantids, named for a defunct constellation, Quadrans Muralis, a forgotten corner of space now folded into Butas. Their meteors radiate from that direction, flashing like flares in the deep winter cold. But their show doesn't linger. Unlike the Geminides or Perseids, the Quadrantids peak for just a few hours. Blink and you've missed them. Their origin is also unusual, the best guess an extinct comet or asteroid known as 2003 EH1, a mysterious object that hasn't been seen actively shedding debris, yet somehow left behind this annual storm. And when they strike, they strike fast. Speeds exceed 40 kilometers per second. Some fireballs shatter into clusters of light. On the night of January 3rd to 4th, seasoned watchers who brave the cold under dark skies can witness up to 120 meteors per hour. 
but only during that sharp peak. Not every wonder lasts. The quadrantids remind us that some brilliance must be caught in the moment or lost forever. Level 4 The source is legendary. Halley's Comet, a ghost with a name, a celestial icon that returns once every 76 years, but it doesn't need to show up for its presence to be felt. Twice a year, Earth passes through its long, sprawling trail of dust, and when we do, it ignites the sky. The first wave comes in early May, the Eta Aquariids. They're swift, so swift they almost escape notice, streaking across the sky at 66 kilometers per second. They radiate from the constellation Aquarius and are best seen just before dawn, especially in the southern hemisphere where the radiant climbs higher. These meteors are known for their speed and subtlety, not the brightest, but graceful. Their long paths slice across the heavens, sometimes leaving faint glowing trails that shimmer and fade like embers caught in wind. The Eta Aquarius peak around May 5th to 6th. In dark skies near the equator or further south, rates can exceed 50 meteors per hour. Level 5 Then comes October, and the second half of Halley's legacy returns. The Orionids are the twin trail sparked when Earth crosses the opposite leg of Halley's orbit. If the Eta Aquariids are spring whispers, the Orionids are autumn sparks. They radiate from the constellation Orion, the hunter in the sky, and they arrive just after midnight, sharp and vivid. Their speed is high, 66 kilometers per second, like their spring siblings, but they tend to leave more persistent trails, ionized paths that glow for a moment longer like streaks on a canvas not quite dry. The Orionids aren't the most intense shower. You might catch 20, maybe 30 meteors per hour during peak. But their symmetry with the Eta Aquariids gives them poetic weight. One comet, two seasons, mirrored trails of flame. Every October, around the 21st, the Orionids light up the skies. In 2009, they produced an unusually strong outburst, an echo of Halley's lingering touch. Halley may vanish into the deep, but she leaves behind a heartbeat, twin showers marking the passage of her long, looping voyage. Level 6 It begins without drama. No sudden burst, no meteor storm, just a long, steady drizzle, like cosmic rain falling softly on the world below. These are the Delta Aquarids. They don't aim to impress, but they last. Spanning weeks, sometimes over a month, they peak quietly in late July, leaving trails that shimmer best before dawn. Their origin is still under debate. Some trace them to Comet 96P slash Machholz, an object with a strange orbit and even stranger chemistry. Others think there may be multiple sources, layered and tangled, a tapestry of forgotten debris crossing Earth's path. Unlike the Geminids or Persids, Delta Aquariids rarely light up headlines. Their meteors are faint, often drowned by moonlight or city haze. But under dark skies, especially in the southern hemisphere, they reveal their rhythm, 20 meteors per hour, sometimes more, slipping through the void like whispers from a comet's ghost. They move at moderate speed, about 41 kilometers per second, and rarely produce fireballs. But they arrive early, sometimes overlapping with the incoming Perseids, creating a double drip of starlight for those patient enough to wait. Late July, skies over the Australian outback regularly host some of the clearest views of Delta Aquarid activity, flickering gently before the morning sun. Not all beauty comes in bursts. Some simply drift across time, waiting for someone still enough to notice. Level 7 It splits in two. Two radiant points, two streams, one origin. These are the Taurids, slow, golden, and unusual. Not just one meteor shower, but a pair, the northern Taurids and the southern Taurids, both stretching from October to November, with peaks staggered across weeks. They originate from Comet Enke, a short-period comet with an orbit just over three years. As it circles the Sun, it sheds debris in layers, creating wide, spread-out streams that Earth intersects gradually. The result? a prolonged trickle of fireballs. The Taurids are slow, about 27 kilometers per second, but dense, often producing exceptionally bright meteors that flare with orange or yellow hues. These fireballs can seem to move in slow motion, trailing sparks as they fall, 
But there's something else. Every few decades, Earth moves through a denser filament of the Torrid Stream, the so-called Torrid Swarm. During these encounters, larger meteoroids enter our atmosphere, some potentially big enough to survive impact. Some even speculate the Tunguska event of 1908, a mysterious explosion over Siberia, may have been linked to a massive torrid fragment. In 2015, observers across Europe and North America reported a surge in bright torrid fireballs, signaling another pass through the swarm. When the sky sends two trails stitched from one ancient comet, it doesn't just light up, it warns. Level 8 This is not a shower, it's a storm. Most meteor showers paint the night in dots and lines. The Leonids arrive like a flood. Born from Comet Temple Tuttle, the Leonids travel with fury. Their meteors are blindingly fast, over 70 kilometers per second, some of the quickest of any shower. And every 33 years, they don't just return, they erupt. During these rare cycles, Earth passes through a freshly ejected dust trail from the comet's last loop. The result? A meteor storm, thousands of meteors per hour, enough to turn the sky into fire. The 1833 storm was legendary. Witnesses across North America saw over 100,000 meteors per hour. It terrified some. It inspired others. It even helped give birth to modern meteor science. Other storms followed. In 1866, 1966, and partially in 1999 and 2001. And each time, the sky became a burning ocean of motion. In off-peak years, the Leonids remain respectable, 15 to 20 meteors per hour, arriving in mid-November, but their true power lies dormant, waiting, always waiting. The 1966 Leonid storm was perhaps the most dramatic ever recorded, over 40 meteors per second at its peak, seen across the western United States. The Leonids don't just remind us that nature can roar, they remind us that the sky too remembers. Level 9 it happens when no one is watching, because you can't watch it. These are daylight meteors, real fiery fragments burning in the sky, just hidden behind the sun's glare. The Ariatids are the most powerful of them. Peaking in early June, they're fast and bright, but invisible to the naked eye. Earth plows through their stream in broad daylight, and we never get to see the show. But we can hear it. These meteors are detected by radio waves, using radar systems that bounce signals off the ionized trails left behind. It's like listening to light and decoding the sky through static. The Ariatids likely originate from the Marshall-Miller complex, or maybe even from the same parent as the Delta Aquarids. But mystery still surrounds them. Some even propose Comet 96P slash Machholtz again, looping silently through this part of the sky. On June 7th each year, radio astronomers detect hundreds of high-speed entries, evidence of a storm we can't see but can still map. The universe doesn't always perform for your eyes. Sometimes, it sings in frequencies we've only just learned to hear. Level 10 What if some meteors weren't from around here, not from the solar system, not from familiar comets or known asteroids, but from another star, another galaxy, another time, Interstellar meteors are theoretical, but they're becoming harder to ignore. In 2017, a peculiar object named Oumuamua passed through our solar system. Its path was hyperbolic, unbound by the sun. It came from outside and left the same way. Could smaller, unseen interstellar objects also reach us? Could their trails, if they exist, produce brief, one-time meteor showers? Singular streaks that arrive once and never return. In 2014, a fireball over Papua New Guinea was later confirmed by US military data to have an interstellar trajectory. Now officially the first known interstellar meteor. It burned up in the atmosphere before it could be recovered, but it left a trail unlike any other. We haven't seen an interstellar shower yet, but the idea lingers. Somewhere out there, Alien debris may already be flying toward us, silently, invisibly, unconnected to any comet we've ever charted. The CNEOS 2014-1-8 fireball was officially confirmed in 2022 as likely interstellar, a rogue object that snuck into our sky and died unseen. If even one meteor came from the stars beyond, then the sky isn't just local, it's universal.
Level 11. This wasn't written by gravity. This was written by intention. Artificial meteor showers are no longer science fiction. They're being built, and soon they may perform over cities on command. The Japanese company ALE is pioneering this frontier, designing small satellites loaded with metal pellets that can be released in space to burn up over designated areas, creating the first man-made meteor showers. The pellets are engineered to glow in different colors, burn at precise altitudes, and streak across the atmosphere like falling stars, programmed, predictable, and some argue, poetic. But others question it. Should the sky be our billboard, our laboratory, our stage? Meteor showers used to be ancient, unpredictable, and divine. Now we're scripting them. The Sky Canvas Project by ALE aims to launch artificial meteor shows over Tokyo and other global cities, a marriage of science and spectacle. We used to wish upon meteors, now we might schedule them. Level 12. Now step beyond light, beyond the atmosphere, beyond rock and plasma and gravity. Now the shower isn't meteoric, it's dimensional. In the theories of modern quantum physics, our universe may not be the lowest possible energy state. We may live in what's called a false vacuum, a fragile layer of reality, metastable and waiting. And if the wrong kind of high energy event, like a massive supernova or black hole merger, creates a vacuum fluctuation, it could birth a true vacuum bubble. One that spreads at the speed of light, rewriting physics as it goes. A vacuum decay. Now imagine, in the outer wake of such a fluctuation, beyond our current detection, there are particles. Debris not made of atoms, but of broken laws. Showers not of metal or dust, but of unbound quanta, cascading invisibly across space-time. This is speculative, unconfirmed, but not unfounded. Could we someday detect anomalous radiation in our atmosphere that wasn't meteoric, wasn't cosmic, wasn't solar, but born of a deeper rift? Could there be dimensional showers, traces of ruptures in the vacuum itself? None yet. But experiments at CERN and deep space cosmic ray detectors continue to hunt for strange energies, ones that might not belong to this universe at all. If meteors are messages, then some messages may come from a place where even the rules don't survive. We've now crossed every type of meteor shower we know, and some we can only imagine. With this, we come to the end of our video. See you in the next one.